It took 10 long years, but Final Fantasy XV is at last out. You know what makes a great Final Fantasy game? Well, a lot of things, but summons are... Torian's a big Final Fantasy fan. Summons are some of the great hallmarks of the Final Fantasy franchise, and we're gonna give you the 10 best in the whole series. So hey, I'm Nervous Nick for Screw Attack's Top 10 Final Fantasy Summons. Number 10. Final Fantasy VIII has some really special summons, and for whatever reason, they decided to bring back one of the Phantom Trains from the earlier games. Called Doom Train, this Guardian Force is an optional summon that can be accessed once you have the right items. Its poison-themed locomotion allows this runaway train to inflict a variety of debuffs, and its abilities to remodel weapons and create forbidden medicines is unlike anything else in the game. But its awesomeness lies in its setup, complete with railroad crossing and flaming tracks. There's no stopping this train once it gets started. Well, unless you're pretty handy with the suplex. Number 9. The life of a traveling swordsman is one of humble self-reflection, solitude, and the earnest desire to follow the way of Bushido. But even mythical beings summoned for battle have to eat. That's why Yojimbo doesn't offer his services to the crew from Final Fantasy X for free. Oh no, you're gonna have to pay to kill your enemies. This is what makes him such a cool summon. Not only does he have an elaborate entrance complete with a cute doggy, but his ability to dispose of enemies is directly tied to how much gill you're willing to spend. Sometimes it's enough for Kozuka, where he throws a few daggers, or other times you get Wakizashi, where he cuts down one or multiple enemies using a short sword. But if you're lucky, and by that I mean rich, you can spend millions of kill to unleash Zanmoto, a spinning slash that kills anything and everything on screen. Oh, and if his dog attacks instead of him, you probably paid him too little, but hey, puppy! Number eight. Ah yes, brotherly love. This pair of minotaurs originally appeared in Final Fantasy V as a couple of anthropomorphic bovine bosses. Their return would usher in one of the silliest summons to ever grace the franchise. One big, the other small, their entrance on the battlefield has them playing paper, rock, scissors to see who gets to be a lawn dart. The whole scene is ridiculous and unforgettable, complete with anime waterfall tears. It's kind of like watching Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito from that movie Twins, only instead of defeating their enemies using an elaborate chain trap, they choose to weaponize each other for the sake of destroying some cute little bugs. I love this franchise. Number 7 This small hooded creature has been a mainstay of the franchise for years. His slow meander towards an enemy is somehow cute and terrifying because he shanks him to death. Tonberry wields only a lantern and chef's knife, which can inflict massive damage, but also has the chance of causing instant death. Even if you don't get lucky, he can still dish out the damage, since he counterattacks based on how many enemies you've slain. And if you're a good Final Fantasy player, that number is usually pretty high. Tonberry has taken on many forms over the past 20 years, but he's still the most recognizable in his hoodie, house shoes, and kitchen knife. It's like you interrupted him while making a midnight snack. And you're gonna pay for it. Number 6 Based on the legend of the same name, Phoenix is a fire-based summon that not only brings the heat to your enemies, but also can revive your entire party should the worst happen. It's been a summon in many Final Fantasies, but also a story element. And one of its feathers, often referred to as a Phoenix Down, has been the primary revival item for the entirety of the franchise. Phoenix also holds an incredible secret from Final Fantasy VII. If you're ever having trouble with some bosses, Phoenix is a sure-fire way to stay alive longer. Just link the summon materia with the final attack materia on a party member with the most mana. Every time the character dies, they'll summon Phoenix, reviving your party and hitting back hot and hard. The trick only really works like five times, but if you need more than that, well, <laughs> I think you've got bigger problems. Number 5 during the events of Final Fantasy X, your battles against the antagonistic Seymour lead him to summon a terrifying monster, Anima. While Anima gives you a huge variety of attacks, debuffs, and one massive non-elemental overdrive, that's not why it makes the list. Oh, no, 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 no. Anima is here because of its incredible backstory. The creature is in fact Seymour's dead mother turned summon. His mother, also a summoner, took Seymour on a pilgrimage and became a weapon to help him. 
Stricken with grief, Seymour returned home without her, took 15 years to work out his issues, before coming back and accepting Anima as a weapon. While the backstory is interesting, it definitely didn't stop you from using his own dead mother to crush him multiple times. Number 4 Arguably the most unique and difficult to obtain in the Final Fantasy VII arsenal, Knights of the Round is one of the most powerful summons. It just requires an excessive amount of racing and breeding chocobos to unlock. After acquiring a rainbow of chocobos, you'll finally create the legendary Golden Chocobo, the only means of getting the Knights of the Round materia. Should you manage to get it, Arthur and a dozen knights come to your aid and one by one beat your enemies with a sword, hammer, and trident. At its maximum damage output, it can come in just shy of 130,000 damage, which means it would pretty much destroy any enemy on the first go. Although all 13 knights do attack separately, so it takes forever for something to die. Brutal. Number 3. Odin has been a long-running staple of Final Fantasy summons. Sharing the namesake of the Norse god of war and death, Odin is a massive knight who sits atop a horse that often has one or two too many legs. His primary attack is known as the Zantetsuken, which wipes out a battlefield in a single swipe. He also has a javelin called Gungnir, but eh, you're gonna want Zantetsuken. Not only does he make this list for being incredibly awesome looking, but Odin is also mysterious and difficult to obtain. Most games rely on a traditional spell cast, but in Final Fantasy VIII, his appearances are random at the start of any given battle. So, there's about a 13 or so percent chance that when you jump into a fight, Odin will just wipe the battlefield clean before you can even throw a punch. Now that's a powerful summon. Number two. If you examine the history of summons across Final Fantasy, there are three starters. Lightning, Fire, and Ice. Now they're all important, but the one most revered by fans is Shiva. First, she's one of the few friendly summons who won't always have to be defeated in order to join your party. Second, in all of her incarnations, she rarely uses weapons, instead focusing her will into freezing winds and ice crystals. Reason three, and this is the real reason, she's hot. Oh, don't act like you don't know! As scantily clad blue ladies go, she's probably one of the most persistent Final Fantasy fanboy wet dreams. And Final Fantasy XIII really took that to the next level, when summoning Shiva resulted in a two-woman scissor cycle that you then got to ride. Whew, for being so cold, it sure is getting hot in here. It's number one. In every Final Fantasy game ever, the Dragon King Bahamut is exactly what you think it is. It's the biggest, meanest dragon that you have ever seen. Whether Bahamut is depicted in 3D or even chibi sprite form, he's always massive and imposing. He's often regarded as the most powerful summon among fans, even if that's not even true. In every game, his attacks get more and more impressive. Mega Flare becomes Giga Flare, Two Wings becomes Six. In Final Fantasy VII, there's even five unique Bahamuts, one of which destroys planets. Sometimes he'll show up looking more like a human, wearing dragon armor and attacking with traditional weapons, but whatever form he is, he is absolutely the most recognized and the coolest summon in the history of Final Fantasy. Well, that sure was a great list. What did you think, Torian? He just wants to look at the TV. Anyway, thank you so much for watching Not Top this. 10 Final Fantasy Summons. If you want to see more Top 10s, we've got the playlist over here. And make sure to subscribe because we have new episodes every week. I remember this part. You go, you go through. See ya. And